Okay. What's up, everybody? Just wait a few more minutes for people to come here. What's up, Jai? <clears throat> to Jai to Jai. What's up, Lucas Beyer? How are you, buddy? <clears throat> are you sure you're excited? Just pray God will energize my body, replenish me, rejuvenate me, reinvigorate me by the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. All right? Just wait for a few more minutes. We'll begin. There's some links I want to share in a clip I want to play. It's called Fair Use. You can play clips. It's called Fair Use. That's a right we have where we can play clips, portions of clips, in order to comment on them by the grace and mercy of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha, Father, Holy Spirit. Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha, Father, Son, and Spirit. Yahovah Shalom, Yahovah Shalom, Yahovah Shalom, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yahovah Shalom, Yahovah Shalom, Yahovah Shalom, Father, Son, and Spirit. Wash us in the blood of my God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Spirit. Wash us in the blood of my God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahovah, Father, Son, and Spirit. Purify us, cleanse us in the blood of Jesus, Father. Purify us and cleanse us in your holy blood, Lord Jesus, <clears throat> the blood of the Lamb. The heart of the Father, the Son of God, become flesh from the blessed Virgin Mary. Purify and cleanse us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit, sanctify us, Holy Spirit, and purify us in the blood of Jesus. Sanctify and purify our loved ones. Sanctify and purify my daughters, my angels, all of us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Seal us, Holy Spirit. Seal our loved ones. Seal my daughters for your glory. Enslave us to yourself. Please, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha, Yahovah Rapha. <clears throat> Invigorate us, Holy Spirit. Replenish us, Holy Spirit. Rejuvenate us, Holy Spirit. Refresh us, Holy Spirit. And please, <clears throat> refresh us physically. Energize our bodies, our cells, our organs, our muscles, our sinews, our tendons, our ligaments, every part of our physical bodies. Please, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and energize and refresh our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirits for the glory of Jesus Christ. For the glory of Jesus Christ. For the glory of the Father, Son. Holy Spirit, please fill us. Sanctify us. Transform us to conform to the image of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, speak life to my throat, to my lungs, and my chest. The health I need to use my voice. Strengthen the sound of my voice. And make it pleasing to the ears of your servants, Holy Spirit. To use it to glorify Jesus Christ. May the Lord Jesus increase in us. May the Lord Jesus be magnified in and through us. Save us from our flesh, our sinful pa passion. Save me from my hypocrisy, my filthiness. Transform us to die to the flesh and live in union with your power, Holy Spirit, with fruit from your glorious presence, Holy Spirit, to conform to the image of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus, the Father's beloved. Have your way with this session. Bless this section. Anoint the session. Enable me to recall the scriptures perfectly. Interpret them correctly. Save me from stammering and confusion. Bless them, Holy Spirit, to understand with illumination from your glorious presence. Let Jesus shine gloriously, miraculously, magnificently, and powerfully. And may we disappear. Please, Holy Spirit, we need you. Take over the session. Son of God, Lord Jesus, we need you, not just to teach. Lord Jesus, you know, I need you desperately. When no one's watching and you are watching, save me from my own flesh and my passions. Please, I want to be holy for your glory, Son of God. And destroy our wicked, filthy motives, not to prostitute or whore ourselves for money or for fame. Not to do it for the praise of men, but for your glory, Lord Jesus. Be magnified and increase in us. And please, Lord Jesus, our loved ones, be with them. Bless them. Our loved ones, my daughters, bless them. Wash them in your blood. Seal them in your love, Lord Jesus, all of us. Make us pleasing to your Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Bobby. We love you, Abba. Have your way and save us from attacks of Satan and bless the connection. Please, Bobby. Please, Son of God. Please, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Yehovah, Father, Son, Spirit. What happened to Beal? I shut it down. I had to delete it. <clears throat> 
I, I did want to do a Father's Day session on the fatherhood of God. But unfortunately, Nabil, a lot of distractions from Satan, a lot of attacks from Satan. And we Christians, unfortunately, were not able to focus and control ourselves. We, are, we allowed ourselves to be distracted and cause each other to stumble. We allowed Satan to win. And I decided it was best to shut it down, so I did nothing. Because what happens is, Nabil, no matter how many times I tell my brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, when I start the session, please follow the rules so you can get the most of these sessions. And please be aware of the scheme of Satan. Don't let an agent of Satan, a tool of Satan, to distract you, to engage in conversation so you don't focus on the session because that's what Satan wants. Satan wants you not to focus, to be distracted, and be a distraction. But no matter how many times I say it, Nabil, to my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, you know what it is? We don't listen. We go one ear out the other, honestly. So I said, you know what? Not today. I'm just going to shut down today. All right? So that's what happened. All right? Because I've done so many sessions, Nabil. I've repeated myself like a broken record. I've said, be aware of the schemes of Satan. 2 Corinthians 2.11. Know that he will come to distract. Bring one of his tools his children, or even get a Christian, unbeknownst to the Christian, to be distracted, to start conversations in the text, to get other people to focus on the text, to be distracted so they're not listening to the words, focusing on the text and engaging a discussion they shouldn't be engaging, frustrating me, causing me to stumble, so I cause others to stumble, right? I promised you to teach you 1 Timothy 2.15. I don't remember promising you that. But if you can quote me where I promise you that, then we'll talk. You may be right. So everyone focused? Everyone focused? Wow. Daydream believer. Wait, wait. Daydream believer just told me he needs to go to bed. The same daydream believer that was in Discord telling me I'm hungry and please do a live stream because I want to listen. Wow. The dude who's pr practically begging me, please, please, no, 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 go ahead, please do a live stream. And now he has to sleep. Wake up, sleepy Jean. I know what it means to a daydream believer. And I already done two sessions today. We had an impromptu debate with a young man. That young man turned out to be a very gentle young man. I thought he was going to be a typical Mohammedan who'd come attack and insult and blaspheme, but he didn't do that. And so now my focus is trying to win him to Jesus Christ and not just destroy his objections. So I reached out to him after and I said, look, you're not a typical Muslim. You seem to be a gentleman. I want you to come back, and this time you can ask me questions on the Trinity, and I'll answer them. Because you seem sincere. So pray for that young man. He goes by the name Brody. It was a two-hour session. It was impromptu. But here was a, here's what's ironic. In that session, impromptu, unannounced, we went two hours and we had 600 people. 600 people showed up for that session. 600 people. Do you know why that's astonishing? Because... This confirms what I've told you guys for the past months. For the past months, I've told you, when someone does something about Islam, either about Muhammad or the Quran, or even engages debate with Muslims, you're going to get a packed house. You're going to get, for me, 600. For David Wood, when they were talking about the Quran, they were up to 2,000. People will flock to those sessions. But when you then say, we're going to do a session on the authority of the Bible, the preservation of the Bible, the inspiration of the Bible, the numbers are drastically less. Or we're going to talk about how to refute objections against the Trinity, or Jesus as the God-man, or the Holy Spirit being a person, or salvation, the numbers drastically drop. Why is that? Why is that? Well, some were telling me because atheists and agnostics will come. Okay, that's fine, but come on. You're saying that number is 
predominantly atheist or agnostic? No, it was predominantly Christians. But that just tells you the age we live in, people don't want to hear sound doctrine, the meat of scripture. And you find that not just on YouTube. You'll find that locally. For example, if I say, hey, this Sunday we're going to have a discussion on the Trinity. We got 20 people to come to that church discussion. That would be amazing. But if you have say, hey, we're going to have a concert. Such and such Christian rock band is going to show up, jam-packed to the rafters. Or we're going to have a healing concert, a, 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 a ministry where we'll pray for you if you're sick and lay hands on you so you can get miraculously healed. Jam-packed to the rafters. Sad, ain't it? Guys, thank you for the super chat. God bless you and watch over you. But, hey, that's life, friends. That's life. As long as Jesus sanctifies us, as long as Jesus transforms us, as long as Jesus purifies, purifies us, cleanses us by his blood, makes us truly holy, obedient servants to make me a doer, not a hypocrite, and be more in love with Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Okay, thank you. Now, with that said, folks, it's, it is unfortunate I didn't get to do the session on Our Father who art in heaven because I wanted to start the series on our Lord's Prayer. And what a beautiful time to do it on Father's Day. God's will be done, not my will, his will will be done. And in Jesus' name, as long as we are in union with his will, we will glorify him and delight his heart. May we never go against his will. May the Lord Jesus never allow us to go against his will. I don't know what you mean why the captions are not available. Maybe you should ask Protestant Believer. Can we enable captions, Protestant Believer? I didn't know they're not available. This is something above my pay grade. With that said, I want to give you the link to the article again. This is part two. This is part two. Oops, I gave you the wrong link. Sorry, man. Bullis, bullis, bullis. Part two. Part one is on my YouTube channel. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. This is the article. This article was posted by Paul Williams, an apostate from Islam, who is an open homosexual. He doesn't hide his homosexuality. The one thing I do like about him, he admits homosexuality is an abomination, a perversion in the in the eyes of the true God. The Bible condemns it, and he thinks Islam condemns it, so he doesn't try to justify it. I appreciate that. He's no longer Muslim, but he still likes to bash Christianity. He has a hatred towards Christianity. So he posted this on his blog. Here's the link, guys. Click on the link. Save it because we're going to go through it systematically because in refuting this blog, you're going to learn several things. We're going to kill several birds with one stone. You're going to learn how to interpret the Bible. Go deep in the Bible, how to interpret it, how not to interpret it. You're going to learn how to refute objections against the core doctrines of the Christian faith like the Trinity. And then thirdly, you're going to learn how to turn the arguments against your opponent to destroy their religion, their position, their worldview. Take them captive for King Jesus. Leave them no, ex no excuse for their unbelief. Right? So let me repeat. Okay? Uh-oh. Be careful, Randy. Make sure you take shots of me that make me look handsome and gorgeous. Right? I'm, and I'm wearing my Bruce Lee shirt just in case. Okay? Renee? Bruce Lee. Right? Bruce Lee. Okay. Now, Renee, can you take a picture like that? Say, why come you don't take these kind of pictures, Renee? Say, look at that. Look at that, Renee. Okay, Bruce Lee. All right. Bruce Lee. Now, with that said, okay, I'll get my muscles back by the grace of God this year. I'll get lose that rest of the way there. Rene, Rene. All right. By the grace of the Lord Jesus, here's what I want to accomplish. Thank you, Christy. God bless you. Three objectives. Teach you how to interpret the Bible, how not to interpret the Bible, to plunge the depth of Scripture. Secondly, how to refute objections against the core doctrines of the Christian faith. In this case, the Trinity and deity of Christ. Thirdly, how to then turn the objections against your opponent to demolish and decimate their worldview, their religion, take them captive for King Jesus, leave them no excuse for their unbelief. So those are the three objectives in these sessions in refuting this blog, uh, this blog post. Blog post. And remember, this is part two. You got to listen to part one. Always follow the series. If you see it's a multi-part series, start from the first part, prayerfully listen attentively listen, focus by the power of the Holy Spirit, go back and examine the evidence, trust the Holy Spirit to guide in all truth and sanctify you for the glory of Christ. Now, I do want to play a clip. Fair use. We have the right, by law, to play clips from other people's YouTube channels in order to make a point or provide a response. Okay, here you go. It's fair use, guys. Here you go. 
This just came out how many hours ago? Hmm. I'll let the Kron speak where Shibrali answers questions. It came out today, but how many hours ago, man? It just said how many hours. I really believe, guys, here, here's what I want you to do. Click on this link. Guys, this is from Let the Quran Speak. Shibrali is answering the question, the Holy Spirit in the Quran. I thought it said seven hours ago. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It came out today. After hearing this, I really suspect, because Shabir Ali is aware of Answering Islam website, he's aware of me and the other apologists. He knows, okay? I really suspect Shabir Ali has been listening to our sessions and reading our articles, especially on the spirit in the Quran, because in this video, Shabir Ali makes concessions, makes admissions, that really sound like what we have been saying in our sessions and responses to Muslims concerning the Spirit's identity in the Quran. He says things that I can clearly hear our influence. Now, I may be wrong. As far as I'm concerned, it sounds clear to me he's been affected, he's been impacted, he's been reading our rebuttals and our sessions, and it's rocked him, and it's shaken him, and it's affected him, because now he's saying things about the Spirit in the Quran, that are quite damaging and incriminating. Okay? Here it is. Here's the link. So here's what I want you to do for me. Click on the link. Listen to it. But I want you to go to his YouTube channel and Facebook and says, Sam Shimon calls you out to a debate. Sam Shimon is saying he wants you to debate him on Tawheed and the Quran. Does the Quran teach Tawheed? He wants you to debate him on that topic. Don't back down. And I'm willing to debate him, does the Bible teach the Trinity? But it's going to have to be two separate topics, not two topics in one debate. We're going to do one debate on, does the Quran teach to Tawheed? And watch me, by the grace of Jesus, decimate him and expose him. Another debate, does the Bible teach the Trinity? And watch how I decimate him and expose him in that debate. But please let me know, two different debates, if he wants to debate Trinity, not two debates in one, two topics in one. Let's see if he's confident and man enough to take me up on the challenge and school me. Let's see if he can. I promise you, by the power of the Lord Jesus, I will end his credibility and end his apologetic career. By the power of Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge. That's my promise to you if he takes me up on the debate. But I want you to listen to the video because in this video, you know what he does? He admits what we've been saying. The Quran does not explicitly say the Holy Spirit is Gabriel. Muslims... Shibra Ali's again at it. He's making concessions that are helping us destroy your religion and expose the fraud of Muhammad. He just came out saying that the evidence shows that when the Quran was recited, initially Muhammad's companions who heard the Quran were not so much interested in reciting it verbatim. So at times they simply conveyed the message of the Quran, but not the exact wording of the Quran. And later on, then they became a little more strict and try to get back at the original wording. But then there are variants of the Arabic Quran, and it's all acceptable within the will of Allah. Wow, Shabir, you are coming so close and helping us destroy Islam. Keep on going where you're going, because you're going to argue yourself out of Islam into agnosticism or into saving faith in Jesus Christ. But what makes this, this video interesting, guys? Here's the link again. He admits that the Quran doesn't explicitly identify the spirit as Gabriel. He admits that the verse that I have been using for years, chapter 17, verse 85 of the Quran, chapter 17, verse 85, it says, they ask you about Aruch. This is the Quran, chapter 17, verse 85. Chapter 17, verse 85. They ask you about Aruch, the spirit. Say, the spirit is by command of my Lord. Pay attention to what the Quran says. Muhammad is asked about the identity of the spirit. Aruch, the spirit. Ruh, and it's definite. Aruch. What's Muhammad's response? Say, the spirit is by command of my Lord. He comes down by the command of my Lord. Only a little knowledge has been given to you concerning him. Only a little knowledge about the spirit has been given to you. And then Shabir keeps harping on that. See, only a little knowledge has been given to us concerning the spirit. So we don't know. And he says, it's a mystery. 
Wait, Shabir, you sound like the Trinitarian who says the Trinity is a mystery. It's beyond comprehension. That's all in this clip. So let me play this particular section of the clip where he's asked about Mary and the Spirit in the Quran. The Spirit's role in causing Mary to conceive the Lord Jesus from the Quranic perspective. This is the part. Fair use. Fair use. Let's read. The prophet Muhammad, let's listen sorry. on him and, and god knows best in the end we have to say we we know uh, uh not about the spirit except a little you guys can hear tell me about uh, the spirit's role in uh, the story of mary yeah so the quran says that mary guarded her chastity in the 67th chapter of the quran the 66th chapter of the quran uh, uh, that mary guarded her chastity and then uh uh, then we we blow into it of our spirit uh, or from our spirit uh, so what does that mean and uh, no one has been able to explain that and uh, it is uh, a mystery from a muslim point of view no one has been able to explain it it is a mystery from the muslim point of view gold guys download this video clip before they delete it no one has been able to explain it and is a mystery from the Muslim point of view. Let's continue. Because as we said, we're, we're not going to uh, equate another uh, being with God. Uh, so, uh, and at the same time, we don't want to deny anything that the Quran has actually said. Uh, so we can say that something here is mysterious. Somehow there is a spirit from God that goes into Mary and uh, that uh, eventually uh, allows uh, Mary to have this child. But Wow, it's mysterious. We're not going to equate him with God because, you know, Allah is only one. There's nothing like him. You see the begging the question? Did you see the circular reasoning? He says, we're not going to equate the spirit with Allah because Islamic theology won't let you. But at the same time, what is said about the spirit causing Mary to conceive, that is something mysterious we don't understand. You see what he just did? He just admit that what the Quran says about the spirit Causing Mary to conceive a child while a virgin is a divine activity. It is an activity of God, but we won't equate the spirit with God. But it's a mystery nonetheless. Wow. Here's the link. Download it before it's deleted, folks, because I'm telling you, the Muslims, when they hear this, it's going to cause another tsunami. Yasser Qadi and Shamir Ali are sending tsunamis to the Muslim world, shockwaves to the Muslim world. Glory to Jesus. The Lord is now allowing the Muslims to reap what they sow. All those years of sowing blasphemy, now they're reaping. The same arguments are being turned against their false prophet and their satanic God to destroy their religion by the power of the risen Jesus. This is going to send a tsunami, guys. Please save the link, download it. I promise you, once enough Muslims know that Christians are onto this clip, that Christians are onto this clip, and they start using it, another tidal wave. Thank you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus won't be mocked. This is the generation that the risen Lord is raising up warriors, lions, and lionesses to destroy Muhammad and his false god and expose Muhammad for being the son of Satan he is and to magnify Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're living in some exciting times, folks. Christ is near sooner than, than ever before in his descent from heaven. And may we be ready to meet Jesus, clothed in his righteousness, washed in his blood, sealed by the Spirit. Beautiful, guys. Who would have thunk it? Shibrali, mystery, mysterious. We won't equate him to Allah. He's subordinate to Allah. But see, uh, you know, yeah. That's why go on his Facebook says Sam Shimon is calling you out. And if you're brave enough and intelligent enough to expose Sam Shimon, he's challenging you. Does the Quran teach Tawheed? And if you want to do the Trinity in the Bible, we'll do that as a separate debate topic. First, debate me on does the Quran teach Tawheed? Not your satanic trick, two topics in one debate. That ain't going to work with me. That ain't going to fly with me. So let's see if he's man enough to put me in my place. All right. Now, with that said, are we ready? Yes, Sargon. 
That was my first public debate. I think it was 2001. Never debated before. I was green. And I would do things a lot differently and better now. But even back then, I was not impressed. And I didn't think he did good. I was more upset with me than him because I thought he's terrible. And I still think he's terrible. And I'll be honest. I'm not going to be politically correct. He's a joke. He's a charlatan. He's a wicked, conniving, lying snake. But why do people like him? Because he comes as such a calm and such a loving and nice guy. But see, Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So why would you be surprised that a son of Satan would masquerade as a minister of righteousness? That's the facade. That's the charade in order to disarm you and deceive you. But he ain't pulling that one on me. By the grace of Jesus, I'll expose the snake and his father by the power of Jesus for the glory of Christ. Thank you for that super chat. Now, with that said, are we ready? Are we ready? Everyone with me there? Let's continue with the exposition. Here's the link to the article. And Lord willing, we'll, those of you come listening later, these links will be in the description box. Thanks to Mod. Thanks to the mod, mods, there's more than one, helping me to help you, especially Protestant believer. They typically put the links in the description box of the sessions. So they'll be there when this is done. So let's continue breaking down the objection. I already went through the first objection, but I want to unpack 1 John. <clears throat> Does God increase in wisdom? Go back to part one. I address 1 John chapter 3, verse 20. And Luke chapter 2, verse 52. But I want to explore the epistle of John with greater depth. Why? Remember what I said in the first part. Learn how to interpret your Bible. Learn how to read your Bible. Learn how to understand your Bible. And explain and articulate the revelation that God has given you called the Holy Bible. Number one. When your debate opponent or an anti-Trinitarian... Quotes a book, he's stuck or she's stuck. What do I mean? As I said in part one, if they quote an author, that means now they've given you the license and authority to use that author to make your point and turn that author against them. In other words, since this blog quotes 1 John, guess what? You're stuck now with what 1 John says. If you're quoting 1 John against me, that means you now have given me the license to use that first same first John that you used against you to refute you and your shameless butchering of first John. Do not forget that principle. Once you quote an author or a book against me, you're stuck. I'm now going to use that book against you to expose you. So you can't tell me, well, we don't know who wrote first John. We don't care what he has to say. But wait, wait, wait. Didn't you just quote first John? Yeah. So if you quoted first John, then if 1 John is good enough to make your point, then he's good enough to expose you and your prophet. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Exactly. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew is learning these principles as, as well. When a Muslim uses a particular book or author, try to make your case from that author or that particular book before you venture else, elsewhere. So the worst thing that a Muslim could do is quote 1 John. Worst thing you can do. It is thoroughly Trinitarian. It's only five chapters full of meat regarding the Trinity. Christ being the God-man. The Holy Spirit being a divine person of the Godhead. Full of meat on salvation and holiness. How to live and how not to live. Full of meat. Five chapters full of meat from the Holy Spirit. So they quoted 1 John 3.20. Let's quote John, the epistle of John, to see what we can learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we ready? Are we ready now to venture into 1 John? Okay. Let's start with 1 John chapter 1, and let's read the first three verses. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Let's start. Follow with me. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Okay. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes... See, John is an eyewitness. I saw this with my own eyes. I saw it with my eyes, which we have looked upon on our hands have handled. My own physical hands touched him, touched him, 
I saw him, heard him with my ears, and I touched him with my physical hands concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Right there, these three verses full of meat. But please ask the Spirit to help you to focus, rebuke any distractions in the name of Jesus. Please don't let Satan win. Please, you got to focus or you're not going to learn. Okay? You got to focus or you're not going to learn. Number one, John is saying, I'm not just writing about someone that I heard of. I'm writing about my own eyewitness experience with this someone. I saw this one with my own physical eyes. I heard him audibly with my own physical ears, and I touched him physically with my hands. I touched him physically with my physical hands. I'm talking about someone I was with, met, knew, and followed, and physically handled, and physically saw, and physically heard. And who was that one? I saw, I touched, I heard the word of life. I saw, I touched, and heard life itself. I saw, I touched, and I heard the eternal life that has been with the Father from the beginning. Notice the three titles given to Jesus. The three titles given to Jesus. Let's unpack them. Uh, Michael, you know if I explain, I'm going to block you, right? If I have to explain, I'm going to block you. So let me know if you want me to explain, if you really want me to explain. If I have to stoop to your level to explain my use of the Quran, you know I'm going to block you, right? I was waiting for someone stupid enough to bring that up as an objection. No, it's not a question, man. It's an asking a question in the wrong context when I've answered this question a dozen times. But you're being a smart aleck, and I don't like smart alecks. So do you want to make my day? You know, if I answer it, I'm going to have to throw you out of my, uh, my YouTube channel, right? So do you want an answer? No, no, no. I will answer you, then I'm going to block you. So it's your choice. Do you want to shut up and focus or open your mouth and I muzzle you? Which one is it you want? Your game. What do you want me to do? Because I love to embarrass people who think they're smart Alec and know it all. Right? I love smart Alex. I love them. Because I like to show them that they're really fools who think they're smart. So you got five seconds to tell me. Do you want an answer? Are you going to shut up so I don't embarrass you? Five, four, three, two, one. Let me sing you this Assyrian song we sing at the end of weddings. Bye, bye. Bye 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 okay good we got that now now that we get rid of these satanic nuisances like I told you I'm not gonna tolerate satanic nuisances I'm not gonna tolerate satanic nuisances you can't focus get out of here sorry I don't want more people to come that want to learn not hit the road Jack I want you back. No, 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 no. What you say? All right. All right. Now, with that said, notice whom John saw, heard, and physically touched. Whom John saw with his physical eyes, whom John heard with his physical ears audibly, and touched with his physical hands, whom he touched physically. He heard, he saw, and he touched the word of life, Life and eternal life that was with the Father from the beginning. Now, it's not sufficient to read. You have to read with understanding. What does it mean that Jesus is the word of life? It means he's the revelation who reveals what life is and how to obtain it. Number one, word of life means the word who reveals what life is and how to obtain it. He's not simply life. He was the revelation of life. He reveals to us what life is and how to obtain it. The word of life, the revelation who reveals life. That's number one. Whoever with me there? So then why is he called life and eternal life? Life and eternal life. Here's why. 
because Jesus not only is the source of everlasting life, he's also the source of all types of life. He with the Father and the Spirit, he with the Father and the Spirit, give life to every creature. He's the source of biological life. He's the source of every aspect of life and all the varieties of life. He's the source of it. Marine life, he's the source of it. Plant life, he's the source of it. Source of it. The, the life of the stars, the sun and moon, he's the source of it. Life in all its ver various forms, in the variety of forms, comes from Jesus in union with the Father and the Spirit. The Father with the Son and the Spirit are the source of all the life that we experience and see in all its various forms, multifaceted life, the manifold life we see, plant life, marine life, <clears throat> the life of the constellations, biological life, all comes from Father, Son, and Spirit. No, the angels are excluded, Lewis. The angels have their own life. They live independently from the Father, Son, and Spirit. <laughs> Do I need to answer that question, Lewis? You know I love you, right? Do I need to answer that question, brother? You see? Thank you. Lewis, the Lord has blessed you with wisdom from the Spirit. I don't need to answer a question that's so obvious to answer. No, I know it is, but there are some questions that no need to be asked. If Christ created the angels, who do you think is giving them their life? Come on, Lewis. Go deeper. Think deeper, not shallow. That's why I'm getting tough with you. Come on now. Honestly, come on. Do you need to ask me that question? When I said life in all of its manifestations, if angels live, where do you think that comes from? You with me there? Everyone else getting this? Okay. Let's be more specific, Lewis, because now, Lewis, you're scaring me because I'm saying you're not paying attention, and I hope that's not the case. Really, I hope it's not. Who are we talking about right now in 1 John 1, and what am I explaining? Here we go. The buffering, please, Lord. Who are we talk I hope we don't shut down again. Oh boy. Who are we talking about right now in 1 John 1? And what are we explaining? My goodness, we're shutting down again. I hope not. Let's see. I'm going to see, man. I'm getting scared now. Okay. What are we talking about and what are we explaining about First, uh, first John? Be, guy, be specific. Who cares about the buffering? I'm talking about what are we talking about and what's the topic? No, not Jesus as the word of life. You're not paying attention, Charles. Nope, not how he's the word of life. You guys are not paying attention. So those of you who say word of life, you're not paying attention. No, you guys are not getting it. No. Yeah, you guys are not getting it again. I already explained the title, Word of Life. I already explained the title, Word of Life. The fact that you guys are still harping on Word of Life, that means you're not following the argument. You're not paying attention again. No, that's not what I said either, Deuce Wolf. Nope, that's not it either, Daniel. The guys, the more you guys are coming, the more it shows you're not paying attention. Yep, you guys are not. I'm not accomplishing my purpose in these sessions, it seems. You guys are not able to focus and understand what the topic is.
Yeah, no, it's not the incarnate word. Daniel, the more you talk, the more you discourage me because you're not getting it. You're definitely not paying attention. Okay, guys. What in the world is happening to us Christians, man? My goodness. What's happening to us? We can't pay it. All right, let's see. Well, yeah, and it's for buffering. Yeah, it's getting bad here in the connection. Yep, the connection's even bad, right? It's slowing down. What's happening here? Come on, man. Come on, man. Some other. Yo. Yo, so on. Let's see. Let me just shut down some stuff. Yeah, maybe it's going to work. I don't know the connection that good. No, it's been slowing down here. Let's see. All right. Oh, kek, kek, you didn't get it either. So, guys, I've been wasting my time. I don't think I'll be doing this much longer if I'm wasting my time. This is the second time this happened. There's no point in me teaching if we're not getting it. I'll be honest. I'll find something else to do. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. This is the second time, man. From the responses, they're so pathetically bad. It means you guys are not la listening. Yeah. Yeah, listen. All right. Okay, folks. Uh, all right. No, you guys are not. You're not getting it anyway. Yeah, most of you, about 90% of you couldn't answer the question. So that means I'm not doing good as a teacher. I'm not communicating. Okay, folks. Uh, Skype is open if you guys want to call me. Call me on about Skype. I'm going to change the title. We're going to talk about something else. All right, here goes. Call me. There's no point in talking about this either. All right, Benny Malik. <laughs> Skype is open, guys. If you want me to continue, we'll just take Q&A. No, no, we're going to take – I can shut down or we take Q&A. One of the two. What do you guys want to do? I can't. You guys are not getting it. So I got to really re rethink about what I'm going to be doing from now on. Yeah, maybe I just – yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be – no, I can't. I'm not going to waste time. You guys are not getting it. You're not getting it. I can't make you get it. That's beyond my ability. All right. Who's got questions? We're going to have to change the title here. Hey, Prot, can you change the title? Just put Q&A. Prot, can you do that? It'll be better. There's no point, man. This is the second time in a row people are not getting the point. So I'm just wasting my time. Okay, change the title, Q&A, brother. Let's do it. Any questions, you can ask me in the comments or you can call me. Anybody? Yeah, I'm sorry. Man. Well, yeah, we had a good plan. Just some patience. Okay, Shimon. Thank you, Mr. Truth. Keep telling me to be patient. I don't think you can be more patient than me. Okay, Keck. Keck, I don't think I'm going to answer your question because you couldn't understand what the topic was. So... Yeah, Jonathan, that was actually going to be part of my discussion in 1 Timothy 6 because it comes up in the blog. Who that he meant, in fact, Jonathan, it's interesting you mentioned that. If you go to this article right here, you go to this article right here, go here, Jonathan. He mentions 1 Timothy as a way of refuting the deity of Christ. So, Jonathan Singleton, if you click there, if you click there, you'll see what does he quote to prove that Jesus is in God? 1 Timothy 6 15 and 16. 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16. Can Satan himself tempt God? God cannot be tempted with evil, James 1, 13. And when the devil ended all the temptation of Jesus, he departed from him for a season, Luke 4, 13. And then notice what he quotes John, Jonathan Singleton. 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever and ever. Amen. So Jonathan Singleton, it's ironic. He quotes that first to try to prove that Jesus isn't God. 
No, what 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 is what is that's not what, what I was teaching. So the more you talk, the more you you anger me because it shows you were not paying attention. What is what is? So Jonathan, it's ironic. He quotes that verse to try to disprove the deity of Christ. First Timothy six fifteen and sixteen. So now, Jonathan, if you want me to pack it, I'll unpack it for you. But please pay attention, brother. Uh, if you pay attention, I'll answer it, man. Because if I if I explain what it means and people don't get it, I am I really am not accomplishing my goal. goal. Okay. Okay. You guys are still on the word of life when I moved on to the title life. So that means you guys were not paying attention. So Jonathan, if you want, I'll explain it, but I need you to listen, brother. I really do. And I'm really scared to answer and people don't get it. It's going to really be a discouragement to me. Okay. Does 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16 refer to Jesus or is it referring to God the Father? This is where translation will impact interpretation, Jonathan. This is where translation will impact interpretation. Okay. Will impact interpretation. Okay. Now, let me show you how the NIV renders 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16. Prod, are you there, brother? Maybe you can post 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16. I see this. If you guys are interested, I'll take Q&A. If not, I can shut down. It's up to you guys. Okay, First Timothy 6, 15 and 16. Good, John. Keep it up. First Timothy 6, 15 and 16. The attention span of people, man, it's unbelievable. Which God will bring about in his own time, God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, who lives in an unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Now, Jonathan Singleton, did you notice the NIV inserted the word God, which God will bring about in his own time, God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. So if you read in NIV, the NIV has already told you who it can't be. It can't be Jesus. So it's already told you it's God the Father. But you know what's sad, Jonathan? We already have... Christians with sucky attention spans, they can't even pay attention to lessons. Like imagine them trying to read and understand what they read. If they can't pay attention to what they hear and understand, how are they going to understand what they're reading in front of their eyes? Jonathan, you know what sucks about the, the NIV? If you're not aware of at least the original language, you won't know, you won't know that the word God is not in the Greek. They added the word God. Do you know that, Jonathan? The Greek does not say which God will bring about at his own appointed time. The word God is not in the Greek. That's inserted by the NIV. Exactly. You see why not all translations are equal? Here, let me show you something. Here, let me let me give you this. Okay? Let me show you. Let me, let's see. You don't take my word for it. Here's the interlinear Greek. You're going to see. That the word God is not in the Greek. Here you go. Here you go, brother. Find it first. Sorry about that. Let me get it for you. Here you go. Okay, here you go. Jonathan, click here. What is what is if I found the Ark of the Covenant? I will make sure they throw you in jail for being a fraud. Here it is. Do you go there, Jonathan? Click on it. You'll see the word God. Is. Can you show me where the word theos, the word God is in the Greek? Do you guys see it? The word God is not in the Greek of 1 Timothy 6.15. Does everyone see that? The NIV inserted word God in verse 15. Already telling you who they think it means. It means the Father. No, it doesn't. If you actually read 1 Timothy 6.15, the word theos, God, is not in the Greek. So now let me give you a translation that's more accurate. One that doesn't insert the word God. And then you tell me who is being spoken of. If you take the word God out and just follow 
the context and then try trace back the referent, the antecedent to the pronouns, you tell me who is being referred to, who's being spoken of in that language. So let's go to MEV, Modern English Version, because I want it in plain English, even though I prefer the King James Version. First Timothy 6, we're going to read 14 to 16. Thank you, Anjali. God bless you. First Timothy 6, 14 to 16. First Timothy 6, 14 to 16. Watch here. To keep the commandment without blemish, blameless unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he, ah, now if you just read it in an accurate translation, who is the he who is the blessed and only ruler, the king of kings and lord of lords, will reveal at the proper time, he alone has immortality, living in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen nor can see. To him be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Let's post it again. First Timothy 6, 14 and 16. When you don't read a biased translation like the NIV, and you just translate as literally as possible, who is the he in the context? First Timothy 6, 14 and 16. To keep the commandment without blemish, blameless until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he, who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Which the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, will reveal at the proper time, whom he, the Lord Jesus Christ, alone has immortality, living in an unapproachable light, whom no one has seen nor can see. To him be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Did you catch it? It's interesting that H. Fowl and Lucas are here pontificating and talking about side issues and not paying attention to what I'm saying. Amazing, man. They got some courage and nerve to do that. Even though I said don't do that. Now, does everyone see that if you don't insert the word God in the English translation, because the word God is not in the Greek, that it is clear that Jesus is being spoken of, that Jesus is the one said to be our only sovereign, our only sovereign ruler, king of kings, lord of lords, that he alone possesses immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light. Clear, right? Now let me give you further proof that Jesus is the one being described in 1 Timothy 6, 14 and 16, not God the Father, but Jesus Christ. Not God the Father, but Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who's being described. Because notice the description, 1 Timothy 6, 14 and 15. 1 Timothy 6, 14 and 15. One more time, and I'm going to bring corroborating evidence that it's Jesus being spoken of. Okay, To keep this commandment without blemish, blameless until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he, who is the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords will reveal at the proper time. Revelation 17, 14. Who is expressly said to be King of kings and Lord of lords, Lord of lords and King of kings? Revelation 17, 14. Okay. Revelation 7, 17, 14. Revelation 17, 14. 17, 14. These will wage war with the Lamb, but the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. Who's Lord of lords and King of kings? The Lamb. Those who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Revelation 19, 13 to 16. Revelation 19, 13 to 16. I'm scared to ask questions about this because I'm scared people won't get it. Ah, Christians, we are, we've become a joke. Every one of us, myself included, we are jokes. We're pathetic. I'm the first who's pathetic, a hypocrite who fails the Lord. Lord Jesus, have mercy. You truly are amazing to be able to tolerate someone like me. Anyway, Revelation 19, 13 to 16. Daniel, are you upset? You don't like it, brother? Then you can leave. Don't come back. No one put a gun to your head. Please don't come back. Revelation 19, 13 to 16. Because you couldn't get it, you couldn't figure it out, you can answer the question. So you're wasting my time as well, brother. Revelation 19, 13 to 16. 
He is clothed with the robe dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. So it's not the Father. The Father is not called the Word of God, right? Let's see who's going to pay attention here, who's wasting time by pretending to listen and not listening. Anyway, so you're lost, man. You don't want to listen, learn? There's nothing I can do for you guys. It's not my work. It's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. The armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Out of his mouth proceeds a sharp sword with which he may strike the nations. He shall rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury and wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written. And too bad that we don't have what's written. So we'll wait before the rapture before he posts that part. On his throne and on his thigh, he has a name written. I don't know why he went to 17. The Alzheimer's is kicking in. Hey, Joe. Hey, Biden. It's okay, brother. It's okay, Joe. You're all right. You're okay, brother. Verse 16. You didn't quote all of it. I didn't know why you're going to 17. Yeah, but the, you didn't quote all of the MAV. You missed the part. It's okay, Joe. Biden, we love you, bro. No, you didn't. It's not there. Protestant, the section is not there. Revelation 19.16. It's not there, brother. Again, it's not there because you're not looking further enough. All right. I'm going to post it. I'm going to show you here. Let me show you, brother. Let me show you. I'm not going to argue with you, brother, because I don't pay you to do this, and you're a blessing. I will, I'll weigh hands on you later. Here you go, MEV. So I show you that you're not going further enough to see it's there. It's the words right after the colon. That's all right, bro. Love you, bro. Love you, man. I love you, bro. Hold on. Yep, you didn't quote all of it. It's right there. You stopped at the colon, but you didn't quote where it has King of Kings and Lord of Lords in all capital. Okay, it's okay, bro. I'm not blaming him. Hey, for it's not it's okay, guys. You can gang up on me. Hey, it's your world. Here it is. Here it is. Tell me if this shows up. Did that show up? Did that show up? Revelation 1916 MEV. If you continue beyond the colon, you'll see it says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, no, you didn't quote all of it, brother. I'm telling you, it's not a point of fighting. You didn't quote all of it. Revelation 1916, after the colon, it says... On his thigh and on his robe, he has a name written, and it's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. King of King, Kings, and Lord of Lords, right? Here's the link, folks. Now, I hope you didn't forget the point. You didn't miss the point. Did you miss the point? What was the point? Because Satan is distracting. Guys, I want you to pay attention how much Satan is distracting, attacking to confuse so we don't focus. That's where you need to be prayed up and ask the Spirit to fill you. The greater the attack, that means there's a great blessing awaiting us if we can resist the devil, overcome him by the blood of Jesus. But that's up to you. I can't do that for you. Honestly, I can't. I can't do it. Honestly, I'm not. I'm, I need the Holy Spirit to save me from myself, from my own hypocrisy and wickedness. Okay? Anyway, did you understand in Revelation 19.16 who it is that's being called, who it is that's being called King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Let's try it again. Revelation 19, 13 to 16. How do we know it's Jesus? See, I'm scared to ask the question. I really am. I'm, I am scared to ask the question because I'm scared I'm not going to get the answer. How do you know in Revelation 19, 16, it's Jesus who's being called King of Kings and Lord of Lords? I am really scared to ask this question. How do you know? What in the context shows it's Jesus? How do you know in Revelation 19 it's not the Father? No, Lewis, you're not paying attention, my brother. Ah, oh, Lewis, do I want to kiss your head? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay, let's see how many people got it. How do, you, how do we know it's Jesus Christ in Revelation 19 being called King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Riaz, God bless you. Richard, God bless you. First and last, God bless you. I saw the light. What exactly in Revelation 19 shows that it's Jesus Christ? Topaz, God bless you. No. 
Carly, God bless you. Cheryl, God bless you. Ah, you guys are restoring my, my confidence in humanity. Cap yeah, because Revelation 19.13 says the word of God. Oh, now you restored my confidence in humanity. No, has nothing to do with his clothes being dipped in blood. Has nothing to do with him being called the lamb because he's not called the lamb in Revelation 19. Has nothing to do with any of that. See, so you guys, are you learning something about yourselves? You guys don't know how to read context. And it's not I'm putting you down. You understand why it's sad, why you guys can't defend your faith? Because you do not know how to read the Bible. You see my point? You understand now why I'm being so tough with you guys? Does it make any sense why I'm doing what I'm doing? Is it making sense why I'm so tough with you guys? No, the robe dipped in blood doesn't mean it's Jesus. Because in Isaiah, Jehovah has a robe dipped in blood from the blood of his enemies that he's crushed. No, that's not it. If you guys don't know how to read your Bible, then how are you going to understand your Bible? And if you can't understand your Bible, how are you going to live the Bible? And how are you going to preach the Bible? How are you going to defend the Bible? You can't. You can't. I want to challenge everyone who told me that you know it's Jesus in Revelation 19 because he's called the Lamb. To show me where in Revelation 19, verses 11 to 16, he's called the Lamb. That was Revelation 17, 14. Not Revelation 19, 11 to 16. So how do I know that in Revelation 19, it's Jesus who's called King of Kings, Lord of Lords, not the Father. Because we're told that this one, his name is the Word of God. The Father's not the Word of God. Do you understand now? Thank you, Silent Nosy. You see that? And you know what the Bible says, Silent no Noisy? Hosea 4, verse 6. Hosea 4, verse 6. Roy. Roy, can you make my day? Tell me one more time. Five minutes distraction. Say it one more time so I can muzzle you for the dog that you are, Roy. Go ahead. Okay. Good dog. Okay. Hosea 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. One more time. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. Because you have rejected knowledge. I also reject you from being priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. I also will forget your children. Hosea 4 verse 6. One more time. Hosea 4 verse 6. One more time. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I'm going to repeat that two more times. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And you wonder why America is going, going to hell in a, in a handbasket. You're wondering why immorality is on the rise. Evil is spreading. Evil is triumphing. Evil is being empowered. And Christian virtues are being laughed at, scoffed, and flushed down the toilet because the church has become a sick, pathetic joke in the West. Okay? Sick, pathetic joke in the West. The American church. White, yeah, yeah, I said it. White churchianity. I said it. Hosea 4, 6. Hosea 4, verse 6, right? So, guys, do you want to continue? And I, Again, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to put you down. I mean, you want to continue being stupid and ignorant and foolish? And let me correct another lie. Well, Sam, we're not like you. We're, we're not sharp like you. No, 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 no. Don't insult me. Don't insult me. Let me again put into perspective. Do you have the same Holy Spirit living in you that's living in me? And I pray I'm born of the Spirit. I pray he's living in me. Yes. Let me tell you, it's not about being intelligent. It's about paying attention and being attentive and listening to the Holy Spirit. Let me remind you again. 
Do not make me more than I am. But Sam, you're what? No, no. no. It, let me remind you. No high school diploma. No high school diploma. No college. No seminary. No university. So don't give me that. Well, Sam, no. It's because the Holy Spirit, not because of Sam. But I'll tell you something what the Holy Spirit doesn't do. The Holy Spirit does not honor laziness, stupidity, selfishness, self-centeredness, and people want to be entertained and not educated. He won't honor you, but he'll honor you if you seek him and say, I want to know, I want to know you, I want to know your word, because I want to know Jesus, and I want to be in love with Jesus. That he'll honor. So I'm wondering why is it hard for you Christians to focus? You know, what I, you know what the solution to your problem is? Just pay attention. Just pay attention. But you can't. You can't pay attention. That's what's sad, man. Honestly, you can. You'll be able to watch a two-hour movie and pay attention to the details. And remember in that scene, there was a lamp over there, and the clock on the wall in the movie was 2.15. But you can't pay attention to the Word of God. Come on, man. come on, guys. Seriously? Honestly? Okay, so you get my point? So don't ever insult me and say, but Sam, we're not intelligent like you. No, don't use that pathetic, lame excuse. Don't use that pathetic, lame excuse. Because, friends, I'm not smarter than any of you. I'm not. From a worldly perspective, I'm an idiot. I have people making fun of me. Sargon mentioned it. Was it you, Sargon? Didn't Roger Perkins in the, in the first part of the debate? You should watch the second part. He got absolutely decimated and further humiliated. You're going to see that tomorrow in the second part of the debate when it airs. You see, he kept attacking me. Well, you know, you have no formal training. Muslims can say, oh, you just got GD. As if this is putting me down. As if you're putting me down. No, you stupid moron. You're actually glorifying the Holy Spirit. How really is to take an idiot and give him this wisdom to silence you scholars and make you look like idiots and fools. Right? So, folks, I don't know what I can do for you, honestly. I keep saying, honestly, I keep saying, pay attention, pay attention. Don't be distracted. Pay attention. Don't be distracted. Pay attention. How many more times am I going to treat you like kids? You're not kids. How many more times I got to keep blocking people so I can have a reputation of being this mean jerk who's intolerable and shut down live streams until you finally get it? Otherwise, I'm going to stop. I swear I'm going to stop. I won't do sessions because God doesn't need me. I will stop and walk away. I'm not going to waste my time if you guys are not interested. Honestly. I keep telling you, man, this is the word of the Lord. Pay attention. And you guys go into side tangents. How do we know this is Jesus? Oh, because he's the lamb? Where did it say he's the lamb in Revelation 19? Anyway. It's up to you guys, man. Because I'm not going to keep doing live stream shutting it down. That's going to say this guy is unstable. Because I'm going to get blamed. They're going to blame me. I'm going to get a text for a message from Sahi Christian. Sahi Christian texting me, Sam, you need to be more patient. You're too rude. You're too mean. See? And I don't need to hear that from Sahi Christian. Right? So are you guys going to rise to the task now? Are you going to rise to the task? Right? No, Brenda, don't slander and lie because I'm going to block you. It wasn't 20, Brenda. Hey, God, hey Riaz, can you be, can, at least for the love of God, Riaz, before I block you, can you at least let me make my point to the person before you block them, Riaz? Sai Christian, I'm doing chapter by chapter. 
Don't worry about the 1200 chapters, Sai Krishna. Pay attention. Can you at least focus on the chapter I'm discussing and make sure you get that? Oh, I feel a book. Excuse you. Okay. I'm not teaching you 1200 chapters. We're taking one chapter, one subject at a time. Okay. All right. All right. I don't know. Uh, Jonathan Singleton, I probably lost you in this discussion because people could even convince me that Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in Revelation 19. But enough of you answered correctly. You restored my hope in humanity. Enough of you said, yeah, because he said to be the Word of God. Revel Why do you think I started at verse 13? I didn't even start at verse 11. Do you guys know why I didn't start in Revelation 19, verse 11? Because I knew because of your attention span, you would forget who it is. So I started at 13. Do you know Revelation 19, that particular section starts at verse 11? Did you know I deliberately skipped 11 and 12, went to 13 so that you would get it? I even skipped 11 and 12, which begins that context. So I wanted to see if you get it, the Word of God, and you still... Many of you didn't get it. Many of you did. Glory to God. Many of you did. Praise the Lord. Okay. So now, Jonathan Singleton, do you see why the NIV is not the most accurate translation and why you can't depend on it solely? Because it will mislead you in many places. You saw that, right? You see what it did, Jonathan Singleton? By inserting the word God, which is not in the Greek, it changed the reference from Jesus to God the Father, thereby robbing Jesus of another explicit testimony to his deity and his equality to the Father in essence, glory, power, and majesty. No, Johnny, there's no significance. Well, I, I, I myself prefer the King James Version, but for those who don't, can't handle Shakespearean English, those who can't handle Shakespearean English, if it's too difficult, Shakespearean English, then you go with you go with New King James Version or Modern English Version. Lucas, I have not read the English Standard Version inside and out, so I can't really tell you how good or bad is it. But here's a rule of thumb. Let's see how the English Standard Version translates 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16. 1 Timothy 6, verses 15 to 16. No, Pac-Man. You can learn Hebrew and Greek, but that still doesn't mean you're qualified to then exegete those languages. Because if having knowledge of Hebrew and Greek was a prerequisite for sound theology, how do you explain all these professors, all these teachers who know the original languages and still don't believe the same things? And how do you ex explain that in the time of the apostles, the people they're writing to, their mother tongue was Greek, and the apostles were speaking in their mother tongue, and they still didn't get it or oppose it and contradicted their theology. So the ESV, that's ESV right there? Is that ESV? It says, which he will display at the proper time? ESV? Okay, good. So now let's put 1 Timothy 6, 14 to 16 in the ESV. And for those of you who don't believe me that the word God is not in, the word God is not in the Greek. Here's the link to the Greek. You don't even need to read Greek. It's interlinear. Look at it. To keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he, see, beautiful. Who's the he? Even a blind man who hears it would say, oh, yeah, that's Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, which he, our Lord Jesus Christ, will display at the proper time. He... Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. So now, I gave you the first proof that it's Jesus, right? Right? You caught it? What was the first proof? The pronouns refer to him. Because who's the nearest antecedent? The nearest referent to the pronoun, our Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father is mentioned in verse 13. So I'm going to skip Jesus and trace the pronouns back to God Father in verse 13 and ignore verse 14 where Jesus is mentioned immediately right before the pronouns. So let's skip Jesus and go back to God the Father in verse 13. 
Number two, I showed you elsewhere that in Revelation 17, 14 and Revelation 19, 16, Jesus is expressly set to be Lord of Lords, King of Kings, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So if he's called King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Lord of Lord and King of Kings, why would it shock us that Paul would say that about Jesus? If the same Holy Spirit inspired John, who inspired Paul, why would I be surprised that Paul, in agreement with John, because he's inspired by the same Spirit, would say that Jesus is the only sovereign ruler, King of kings and Lord of lords? But let me give you another proof from John. Revelation 1, 5. Revelation 1, 5. So far, are you with me? Lord have mercy on you. Revelation 1 5. Let's see. Watch what happens here. Revelation 1 verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. Who's the ruler of kings on earth? Jesus Christ. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Okay, now, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to do this, folks. 1 Timothy 6, 14 to 16, back to back with Revelation 1, 5 to 6. 1 Timothy 6, 14 to 16, back to back with Revelation 1, 5 to 6 to see if you see a pattern here. Read. To keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach uh, until... The appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display. He, our Lord Jesus Christ, will display at the proper time. He, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who, meaning our Lord Jesus Christ, alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. Notice that praise at the end. To him be honor, eternal dominion. Amen. Sure sounds like John, because notice what John says. Revelation 1. 5 to 6, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the rulers of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Wow. John sounds like Paul. Both of them end that statement with a doxology, an ascription of praise to Jesus. And they both say the same thing. Jesus is the ruler of the kings on the earth. Jesus is the only sovereign ruler, king of kings and lord of lords. But you know why people get confused? Do you know why people get confused? And don't think it's Jesus? Because it says he dwells in unapproachable light whom no one has seen nor can see. But they'll tell you, wait, Jesus has been seen. How can that refer to Jesus? See, that's the objection. Jesus has been seen. How can that be Jesus? Because it says of this one, he dwells in unapproachable light whom no one has seen nor can see. How can that be Jesus? Are you with me there? You, you want me to respond to that objection? You guys want me to respond to that objection? Jonathan, you scare me that you're thinking that because you're thinking like an unbeliever, but may the Lord sanctify you to think like a believer. Why would you have a problem with someone saying no one has seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? Meaning, can Jesus as God in his divine nature be seen? No, he can't. Can the Father as God in his divine nature be seen? No, he can't. Can the Holy Spirit as God in his divine nature be seen? No, he can't. Do you know why? Because the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit are shapeless and formless. What's there to see? What's there to see? Secondly, is it saying no one has seen Jesus? Or no one can see the light that emanates from Jesus. 
because it will blind you. Fortitude, you're getting excited. You keep thinking it's the light. That's possible, but it may not be the light. Just hold your horses. Get off your horse. We'll get there. Okay. Is it referring to no one seeing Jesus or no one seeing the light which emanates and radiates from Jesus? Because to see that light will blind you. Well, guess what, folks? Is it a coincidence that it's Paul who talks about the light of Jesus that's unapproachable when it's the very light of Jesus in Acts 9 that he saw and blinded him in Acts 9 verses 1 and 9? Coincidence? Hello? Who more qualified than Paul to know that the light of Christ will blind you because that's the light I saw, knocked me down, and blinded me, and I couldn't see? Acts 9 verses 1 and 9. Acts 9, verses 1 and 9. You get it now? So where's the problem? Why isn't it talking about Jesus? And I'm waiting for Protestant before the rapture to post the verses. Acts 9, verses 1 and 9. If somebody post the verses before the rapture. Acts 9, verses 1 and 9. Chapter 9, verses 1 and 9. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to thy priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, right? And suddenly a light from heaven, a light from heaven shone around him and falling to the ground from the impact at the light. But I don't know if you caught it, though. See if you catch it. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. All right. Okay. Now, as he went on his way, he approached the mask. Suddenly, a light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. And Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. He saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, neither ate nor drank. So who better than Paul to know that the light that emanates from Christ will blind you because that was the Christ, that was the light that I saw when Jesus appeared to me that blinded me and I could no longer see until Ananias laid, laid hands on me and healed me. So do you want any more proof that he's talking about Jesus? You want more proof that he's talking about Jesus who dwells in unapproachable light? Because that light, you can't approach it because once the light shines, it knocks you down and blinds you. This guy's talking about Moses. Can you help me understand? What does Moses got to do with Paul? Being blinded by the light? Help me make the connection, please. I don't know what Moses got to do with it. Everyone got it or no? So could it be any clearer that Paul is talking about Jesus and his experience with Jesus and the fact that when Jesus appeared, there was a light that radiated from him, a light that's unapproachable because that light knocked me down and blinded me. So isn't it ironic, the very passage this Mohammedan used to disprove the deity of Christ is the very passage that proves the deity of Christ because it's about Jesus. He alone possesses immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light that no one can see because he'll blind you. And he is the only sovereign ruler, king of kings and lord of lords. So isn't it ironic 
that the very passage the Mohammedan used to prove Jesus isn't God is actually talking about Jesus and identifying him as God Almighty in the fullest sense? Isn't it ironic? I got to turn on the light. Hold on, guys. Let me get the light. Can you guys wait so I get the light? Where is the light? Hold on, guys. Let me get the light because it's getting dark here. Peace on earth. All up, all up, long. Peace on earth. La 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 Peace on earth. Peace on earth. Come on, brother. Hey, brother. What you gonna do, man? I am a real Assyrian. Come on, brother. I gotta get my muscles back. Come on. All right. I gotta get no tone, buddy. No tone. I'm sorry. Don't hate, guys. Don't hate. Don't hate that I'm a gorgeous beast. Peace on earth. La, 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 la. Okay, Mel, if you want to go, if you want to go that far, brother, even though in Exodus 34, when he saw God in the cloud, he radiated from the light of the countenance of God in Exodus 34. But it's okay; it's your world, Emil. It's your world. I'm just a squirrel trying to get some cake and eat it too. Renee, I'm gonna hunt you down, sister. Stop burning candles to my pictures. All right, everyone else, understand that if you properly exegete First Timothy six. 14 to 16, it's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. If you properly interpret it, do you guys want to hear what's even more shocking? You guys want to see, you want me to really confuse you? Not confuse you, like blow you away? Do you know that Joe's witnesses admit 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16 is about Jesus Christ? Did you know that? It's in my article. Let me get it for you. Right. Let me show you. Even the Jehovah Witnesses admit that First Timothy six is Jesus Christ. It's talking about Jesus Christ. Let me find the article because there's too many articles. Let me see if this is it. Yep. Ah, come on, man. Here you go. Here's the link. The Joe's witnesses say 1 Timothy 6, verses 15 to 16 is about Jesus Christ. Guys, click on my article. Click on my article, please. That's the article. Click on it. There, I give you the link. Here's the link. I don't think I can, I don't think I can post it uh, here. In my article, I link to this, but it's too, yeah, see, it won't let me do it. It's too long. Let's see if I can do it. Hopefully I can. All right. No, I can't do it. Yeah, it won't let me do it. Anyway, if you go there, here's, here's what they say. If you go there, it's in my article because the link is too long. It says, Jehovah is the happy God, and his son, Jesus Christ, is called the happy and only potentate. 1 Timothy 6.15. Did you catch it? They said that 1 Timothy 6.15 is calling Jehovah's Son, Jesus Christ, the happy and only potentate. Potent, potentate. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Did you catch it? Here it is. Here's the quote. There it goes. You see it? The Jehovah's Witnesses. Quote 1 Timothy 6.15 and say it's about Jehovah's Son, Jesus Christ. Man, what do you make? Arius, your mother lied when she said you're human because you are a rabid dog born of the devil. Arius, she wants you to know that. Your mother should be arrested and thrown in jail. Now, here's another one. Here's this one. Insight on the scriptures. Here's the link. Guys, this will now take you directly to that quote. Guys, insight to the scriptures. Here's the link. Can you guys click on it and go and read it for yourself? Here it is. Let me read. Insight on the Scriptures, Volume 1. Here it is. Jehovah Witness, is 1 Timothy 6, 15, 16 about Jesus? Yes. Let me read it. 
The first one described in the Bible as rewarded with the gift of immortality is Jesus Christ. That he did not possess immortality before his resurrection by God is seen from the inspired apostles' words at Romans 6, verse 9. Christ, now that he has been raised up from the dead, dies no more. Death is master over him no more. Compare Revelation 1, 17, 18. Now watch what they say. For this reason, when describing him as the king of those who rule as kings and lord of those who rule as lords, 1 Timothy 6, 15, 16, shows that Jesus is distinct from all such other kings and lords and that he is the one alone having immortality. <whistles> the other kings and lords, because of being mortal, die, even as did also the high priests of Israel. The glorified Jesus, God's appointed high priest, after the ordinal Melchizedek, however, has an indestructible life. Wait, Jehovah Witness, 1 Timothy 6, 15, 16 is about Jesus? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you catch it? Oh, yeah. Or you guys, are, am I losing you? You guys got distracted by that dog of Satan again? Or are you listening? For this reason, when describing him as king of kings, of those, king of those who rule as kings, and lord of those who rule as lords. Did you catch it? Hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Jesus is who? Wait, let's see. Jesus is the one spoken of in 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16. Everyone got it? Oh, yeah, here you go. For this reason, when describing him as the king, king of those who rule as kings, a lord of those who rule as lords, shows that Jesus is distinct from all such other kings and lords. Okay, you got even the Jehovah's Witnesses admitting Jesus is the king of those who rule as kings. And Lord of those who rule as lords, who alone has immortality, because 1 Timothy 6, 15, 16 is about him. Paul is talking about Jesus. Everyone got it? So I hope you saw that even the Jehovah Witnesses admit it's Jesus. It's Jesus. That's from my article. Speaking of which, speaking of which, here's the link from the Jehovah Witness website. Here's the link. Guys, click on that link. Please click on that link. What is this link about? Let's read. Is Jesus Christ God? Is Jesus Christ God? Many people regard Jesus as the most influential person in history. But is he almighty God himself? Or was he simply a good man? Let's see how long this is. Listen. Can you hear? Many people regard Jesus as the most influential person in history. But is he almighty God himself? Or was he simply a good man? Many people personally met Jesus, and some of their accounts are found in the Bible, revealing who Jesus really is. For instance, an angel spoke to Jesus' mother about her unborn son and said, This one will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. When Jesus was being baptized, God's own voice confirmed Jesus' identity. This is my Son, the Beloved, whom I have approved. Before I let this finish, please do click on the link. You know why? This is one of the most professional websites I've seen in my life. Beautiful, beautifully decorated, state-of-the-art technology. And this little three-minute, 22-second video, state-of-the-art technology, a cartoon that they produced, professional, slick-looking, they go out of their way and they go to the extreme mile in packaging their product in the most beautiful, professional, slick-looking manner in order to deceive people into following their cult. They go out of their way in the extra mile for their false god and false Christ. How about us? Are we going to do the same? Do we have the zeal they have for their false god? And are we willing to go the extra mile and make the sacrifices to be as professional, 
as beautiful as possible for the glory of Jesus. Okay. Now watch here. Let's read it. Go because I want you to go click and see how professional this. State of the art. Watch here. What did his followers believe? When Jesus asked who they thought he was, Peter responded, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So what did Jesus' enemies say? Those wanting to kill him explained why. According to the law, he ought to die because he made himself God's son. What did Jesus himself say about his identity and relationship to God? He told his followers, the father is greater than I am. Oh, the father is greater than I am. Here is a website devoted in going the extra mile of producing the most beautiful, the most professional looking videos and articles to sell people their poison and damn them to the pit of hell by preaching another Jehovah, another Jesus, another spirit. And what do they quote? The father is greater than I am. Professional video, read it, it's almost done. Even after his death and resurrection, Jesus said this about his future. I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. The biblical Did you hear? And guys, it's not I want you to listen to it, but I want you to see what Satan is doing and what are we going to do to combat the kingdom of darkness. Do you see how beautiful the music is? Even the music is produced in such a way to captivate you and to disarm you and to entice you and draw you because of the melody. Are you listening? Are you guys paying attention? Are you guys paying attention? Listen to the music. That music is deliberately chosen because they study psychology and they know certain type of music will draw you in. It soothes you and almost hypnotizes you so you're drawn in. You paying attention or no? Listen. The record makes it clear that Jesus is a distinct person, separate from God Almighty. One more time. In fact, the biblical record makes it in Listen. your God. Listen to this. Pay attention. Almost not. The biblical record makes it clear that Jesus is a distinct person, separate from God Almighty. In fact, the Bible teaches that although Jesus is a powerful spirit creature in heaven, he is still subject to his God and Father. Wow. Still, God has given a special assignment to his son to bring everlasting life and happiness to all humankind, just as God originally purposed. You see the music change? What the else beat? does the Bible say about Jesus? Did Jesus really perform miracles? Why did Jesus die? Will Jesus return? Listen to to learn more, search for these topics at jw.org or fill out the online request for one of Jehovah's Witnesses to visit at a time and place convenient for you. Wow. Folks, here's an organization that is spending top dollar, going the extra mile, going out of their way to produce the most beautiful professional looking website with the most beautiful professional state of the art videos to deceive people to believe Jesus is a creature inferior to Jehovah and the father alone is Jehovah and you need this organization. What are we going to do about it? Because in this link that I gave you, click on that link at the bottom of the link. They say, learn more. Bible questions answered. Is Jesus Almighty God? Awake magazine. Should you believe in the Trinity? Good news from God. Who is Jesus Christ? When you click Awake magazine, if you click on it, I want you to hear this because this is, again, challenging you guys. God has raised up people to equip you to destroy the satanic blasphemy, but you can't destroy it if you're not paying attention. You can't destroy it if you're not learning. You can't destroy it if you don't understand the arguments. 
You can't destroy it if you don't make the material we give you second nature and a part of your very DNA and the fabric of your soul and able to recall it in the part of the Holy Spirit to glorify Christ. You can't do anything against them if you're not listening, paying attention, and learning. I'm sorry, you can't. You can't. Okay? But here's this link again, and we're going to answer some of the questions. But I want you to listen now. Not only do they have little articles, they're so state-of-the-art, they've turned their articles into audio format so that you don't need to read, you can listen. You know why? They're on to it. They realize we live in an age people don't like to read anymore. So guess what? We'll read it for them. Every link has a place where you can click on audio reading. Someone will read the article for you so you don't have to read it. Wow, are they good. What are we doing, folks? Listen. Beliefs. Should you believe in the Trinity? More than 2 billion people profess to be Christian. Most belong to churches that teach the Trinity, the doctrine that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together form one God. How did the Trinity become an official doctrine? More important, is this teaching in harmony with the Bible? The Bible was completed in the first century CE. Teachings that led to the development of the Trinity began to be officially formulated in 325 CE, more than two centuries later, at a council in the city of Nicaea in Asia Minor, now Iznik, Turkey. According to the New Catholic Encyclopedia, the According to the New Catholic Encyclopedia, Council of Nicaea, notice, New Catholic Encyclopedia, pay attention, it's almost done. Creed attributed to the Council of Nicaea set out the first official definition of Christian orthodoxy, including the definition of God and Christ. Why, though, was it deemed necessary to define God and Christ centuries after the Bible was completed? Almost done. Is the Bible unclear on these important topics? Is Jesus God? When Constantine became sole ruler of the Roman Empire, professed Christians were divided over the relationship between God and Christ. Was Jesus God, or was he created by God? To settle the matter, Constantine summoned church leaders to Nicaea, not because he sought religious truth, but because he did not want religion to divide his empire. Constantine asked the bishops, who may have numbered into the hundreds, to come to a unanimous accord, but his request was in vain. He then proposed that the council adopt the ambiguous notion that Jesus was of one substance, omusius, with the Father. This unbiblical Greek philosophical term laid the foundation for the Trinity doctrine as later set forth in the church creeds. Indeed, by the end of the fourth century, the Trinity had essentially taken the form it has today, including the so-called third part of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. Why should you Almost care? Done. Why should you care? Listen. Jesus said that the true worshipers will worship the Father with truth. John 4, 23. That truth has been recorded in the Bible. Does the Bible teach that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three persons in one God? For one thing, the Bible does not mention the word Trinity. For another, Jesus never claimed to be equal to God. Instead, Jesus worshipped God. A third line of evidence concerns Jesus' relationship with his followers. Even after he was raised from the dead to the spirit realm, Jesus called his followers, my brothers. Were they brothers of almighty God? Were they? Of course not. But through their faith in Christ, God's preeminent son, they too became sons of the one father. Compare some additional scriptures with the following statement from the creed attributed to the council of Nicaea. Okay, now notice what he's going to do. He's saying, I'm going to quote these Bible verses compared to what Nicaea said about Jesus. Notice what the Bible says compared with Nicaea. Pay attention, guys. Pay attention. What the Nicene Creed says. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ that is of the substance of the Father, That's God Nicaea. of God, light of light, very God of very God. What the Bible says. 
My father is greater than I, Jesus. John 14, 28, King James Version. John 14, 28 again. I, Jesus, ascend unto my father and your father, and to my, my God, God and your God. John 20, 17. John 20, 17, King James Version. To us there is but one God, the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, King James Version. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 3, King James Version. These things saith the Amen, Jesus, the beginning of the creation of God. Revelation 3, 14, King James Version. King James. The footnote reads, the Bible study aid, What Does the Bible Really Teach?, includes these two lessons. What is the truth about God? And who is Jesus Christ? You may obtain a copy from Jehovah's Witnesses or read it online at www.jw.org. Almost done. End of footnote. Quick facts. The Nicene Creed is actually not the product of the First Council of Nicaea, 325, but of the First Council of Constantinople, 381, wow. says the New Westminster Dictionary of Church History. The Council of Nicaea in 325 stated the crucial formula for the yet future Trinity doctrine in its confession that the Son is of the same substance as the Father. Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh, Encyclopedia Britannica. The Christian Bible, including the New Testament, has no Trinitarian statements or speculations concerning a Trinitary deity. Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh, wow. The doctrine of the Trinity is not a product of the earliest Christian period, and we do not find it carefully expressed before the end of the second century. Library of Early Christianity, Gods and the One God. In order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the Catholic Church had to develop her own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Wow, even the Catechism of the Catholic Church admits that? You Catholics, they're quoting your Catechism. End of article. Okay, folks, what's the purpose in giving you these examples? I'm going to leave you with this, and I want you to think about this. You guys keep taking, and I'm not putting you down, so if you be offended, insulted, sorry, but here. Keep taking these sessions for granted. Keep pretending to be listening. Keep pretending that you're getting it. And watch as more people leave the faith, more people doubt the faith, because Satan and his children are working overtime to confuse people about what the true faith is. And I'm pretty certain if I were to play this clip to Christians, I would be shocked. From 100 Christians, if two or three would know how to respond to this, I'd be shocked if I could find two or three Christians who would know how to respond to this. So, folks, there's what, what else, what more can we do for you guys? What else, what more can I do than take the time to go through these doctrines and teach you these doctrines and also commit sessions and responding to objections and when you don't listen, you don't encourage me. Because, again, let me just say this. Glory to the Holy Spirit. All glory to the Holy Spirit who is pleased to give me this wisdom. See, I can, I can refute them. I don't need to be here teaching you guys. I can go out there and engage them and refute them. So why am I doing this? Because I trust and believe that the Holy Spirit gives people wisdom to share it with the church, to build up the church, to strengthen the church, to glorify Christ. But... When you guys don't listen, and when you guys pretend to be listening, when you guys can't answer a question that I just got done articulating less than five minutes earlier, it's not encouraging at all. all right? It's not encouraging. You know, and folks, if I was a crowd pleaser, I was doing it for the money, honestly. If I was doing it for the money and I was a crowd pleaser, I'd tickle your ears and just try to bilk you. No, may it never be. May the Lord Jesus never allow me to be a, a spiritual whore where I prostitute myself for fame and money. May it never be. May my motive be to glorify Jesus and see you guys become the best Christians possible 
sold out for Jesus in love with Jesus. If I didn't care, if I didn't care, then I just keep doing what I'm doing and try to bilk you guys. But I'm letting you know, guys, just being honest with you, it gets really tiring. I'm a human. I'm imperfect. I'm sinful. I got my own issues. I got my own sinful passions. I got my own struggles. Man, yesterday was a day from hell. Father's Day and not with my daughters. My daughters in the arms of another man going to the lake, the beach with another man and his kid. Someone who's not their father hugging them, kissing them. And I'm here alone without my kids. It's not easy. And I'm not trying to pity party and play a martyr. So when that happens and then I come and I teach and people don't get it and I have to shut down. When I want to talk about our father in heaven, guys, you don't make it easy. And I've said it. I'm going to say it again. The people who give me the hardest time, the people who are actually the greatest thorn in my side, the ones who give me the hardest time and give me the most trouble are not unbelievers. It's Christians. I've had more problems with Christians, more troubles because of Christians and their mouths and their arrogance and their pride than I've had with unbelievers. Okay. So, folks, it's now the ball is in your hand. What do you want from these sessions? What do you want from these sessions? I'm doing all I can to be used of the Spirit to make you the best Christians possible to know your faith and decimate objections and take people captive for the glory of Christ. All I ask of you guys, and I don't know why it's hard for, for you to do this. All I've asked in these sessions, listen, pay attention. Don't let Satan distract you. Don't go on tangents. Don't pontificate. Don't chime in. Just listen. 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 So that you get it. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. I don't know what else I can do. But folks, honestly, the Lord doesn't need me. I'm saying this from my heart. The Lord doesn't need me. I need Jesus. As long as he gives me health and holiness, I want to serve him till I die. But if I'm seeing that you guys can't answer a question right after explaining a text, right after explaining a text, what does it mean? You can't answer? You're wasting my time. I'm wasting your time. And let's stop kidding ourselves. Let's stop wasting each other's time. I got better things to do. You got better things to do. Instead of wasting our time, I can be doing something else. You can be doing something else. So if you're really serious, if you're really serious, and glory to God, our numbers are growing. It's growing. If any, if I Look, guys, if I was about numbers, I'd try to tickle your ears. May it never be. I took it, May it never happen. Lord, please give me the integrity to never prostitute myself, but do it for your glory. If this keeps up, there's not going to be any more YouTube channel. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to waste your time. You're not going to waste my time. So it's up to you. The ball is in your, in your hand. It's in your court. Do you really want to know your faith? Do you really want to learn your faith? Do you really want the meat of Scripture, to know Scripture, to love Scripture, to be in awe of Scripture and live out Scripture so you can be in awe of the God of Scripture and more in love with Jesus? You're going to need to listen. And you're going to need to listen attentively and enough of this silliness and stupidity. Enough, guys. It's disgusting that you guys can't pay attention long enough to get a point. Come on, guys. Enough. Can we stop? And pray for me not to be a filthy hypocrite. Pray for me. I can walk worthy of Jesus, be a holy slave of Jesus, walking and obeying him, not succumbing to my flesh. Lord Jesus, save me from my hypocrisy. But it's, an, it's enough and enough is enough. Stop being babes. Stop acting as kids. Enough. Let me leave you with this passage. Hebrews 5, verses 11 to 14. Hebrews 5, verses 11 to 14. Hebrews 5, verses 11 to 14. Let me leave you with this. No, Lanky, I'm talking about the people who do come and are listening but not getting it, Lanky. I'm not talking about the few oddballs, the demonic distractions, Lanky. I'm not talking about them. I don't care about them. I'm talking about the regulars that are hurting me. Okay, Hebrews 5, 11 to 14. Guys, please read this with me. Now, here, test yourselves if you're listening. Hebrews 5, 11 to 14. Guys, pay attention, please. Pay attention, please, and read this, please, before you chime in. Hebrews 5, 11 to 14. Of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, 
since you've become dull of hearing. Wow. How did Hebrews know what we would go through in the 21st century? You know why? Because they were going through it in the first century. He's talking to his people. He's saying, you become dull of hearing. You, Christians. See, it's been a problem since day one. You become dull of hearing. You don't hear well anymore. Read it, guys, please. Look. Nothing new under the sun. They were facing the same problems back then. Of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you've become dull of hearing. For though by this time, guys, look at this rebuke to the Christians at that time. Though by this time, you ought to be teachers. You should have been teaching. Man, you've been in the faith for 10 years. You've been in the faith for 15 years. You're still on milk? How come you ain't teaching? That's what he's saying. Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles, the basics. You need to be taught the basics again of the oracles of God. And you've come to need milk, not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled. You're unskilled in the word of righteousness. You're not trained in how to handle the word of God because you're a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is those who by reason... Of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. See what he said? He's talking in a, nothing new under the sun. He's talking to the Christians, he's saying to them, by this time, you should be teaching. But now you still need me to teach you. And go back to the basics, the milk stage, when you should have been eating meat and teaching others. How much longer are you going to be babes? You see? You see his pain? Some of you here, let me leave you with this. Let me leave you with this. I cannot hold a candlestick to the apostles, Dr. J. Formally. I am not worthy to be mentioned in the same category. Please don't. I'm not being humble. I'll never be like Paul, even though he's my hero and I want to be like him. Let me share this with you guys and leave you with this. Some of you... Pay attention to this, guys, because I'm going to leave you this. Some of you have been in the faith for 10 years, and you couldn't defend the deity of Christ or the Trinity. Some of you have been in the faith for 15 years, and you cannot show us why the Bible is inspired, and how do you know it's the Word of God? What have you been doing with your Christian walk? How much longer are you going to continue in ignorance and being unskilled and untrained when God is saying, look, I've given you the Internet. I've given you YouTube. I've given you websites. All free of charge. Absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a dime. And the Lord is saying, what more do you want me to do for you? What more do you want from me to equip you to become the mighty soldiers, the lions and lionesses to glorify Jesus and crush and destroy the kingdom of Satan? And say to Satan, not today, Satan. You're not going to deceive anyone else. Not today. As long as I have breath in my lungs and the Holy Spirit lives in me, you are my enemy and I will fight you to the end by the blood of Jesus, the cross of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit in me. So it's up to you guys. The ball is in your hands. Where do we go from now? From now, where do we go? Are we going to continue to pretend we're listening and we're not listening? And only to break. Now, imagine I'm human. I'm a sinner. I'm wicked. If it hurts me and breaks my heart, guys, I'm a sinner. I'm wicked. I'm not better than you. I'm a wicked dirtbag who needs Jesus. If it hurts me and upsets me, what do you think it does to the heart of the spirit? What do you think it does to the heart of the Holy Spirit? That his servants, the children of God, the brethren of Christ, his eternal companion, are dull of hearing and are not disciplined enough to listen and hear and understand and then live it out. Right. The Lord Jesus be with you. The Lord Jesus shine his face on you. The Lord Jesus flood you in his love, his compassion, his mercy, wash you in his blood and seal you in his love forever. And I pray the Lord Jesus does that for me and my daughters. And may the Lord Jesus increase in us. May the Holy Spirit fill us 
may we be more like Jesus in holiness, in righteousness, in purity, in love, and worship, and service. May you give, give us the power to live for him and die for him if we must, because he is worthy. Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. We love you. And please have mercy on my daughters. We love you, Lord Jesus. Son of God, we love you. Lord Jesus, bless you. Lord Jesus, watch over you. Lord Jesus, preserve you. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. But like I said, brothers, it's not a threat. I can't do this for long if this is going to be the pattern. I can't do this for long if this is going to be the pattern. So hopefully it won't. Let's see if we can change by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Christ. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care.